so excited how it all come together. I'm just loving it. Look at this. I'm going to show you how I put all this together in this video. Got ready-made blocks. We've been doing these for a few weeks now and mine are all finished. I will give you close-ups at the end of the video. So what are you going to need? A bit of recycled bed sheet. Any length you like. Do it, you know, do it long You because we're just going to cut off what we don't need. But I'm going to show you how we're attaching the blocks. So you want your fabric to be as tall as your squares. The length, like I said, immaterial. So with your height, which mine is four inches, so I've just done a strip four inches, and I'm just going to show you how I attached my first page. So I've left a bit at the front, which will be stitched onto our cover. So I've gone one, and I'm just going to show you how I did it. I made like a, a fold, like a hinge, like that which is what I did here. I'm going to try and give you a bit of a close-up. So your, your blocks will attach on either side of that fold to make a page like that. So then all we're going to do is make another fold. So just get your fabric a little way off. Get in my next page and placing it on now i'm gonna just quickly pin it so it doesn't move while i'm doing this and i'm gonna go just all the way through for a bit for a minute so that block square is on and as you can see the fold is going to be inside so this is my page that's going to go next now yeah it is obviously not square because my squares are not square try and make them level at the outside because we can add some lace like i did in my other one now i'm definitely flat it's just this this square is, is slightly smaller so let's pop another pin in i'm going to put it to the edge there so if your squares aren't square, don't panic. It doesn't matter. We'll sort that one out. Okay, so there you have your second page. Yep, see, not square. Now, I thought they were. I thought I'd cut four inch squares, but you know, <laughs> maybe not. And I'm going to pop a pin just for now in the center so it doesn't move while i'm stitching this grab i've got contrasting cotton so that you can see and all i'm going to do is the same as what i did here and just do a quick oops let me turn it round i'm just going to tack it into place so somebody asked me um, in the last video how I attach the lace in between my, oops, there we go. <laughs> um, sorry, how I attach the lace in, in the centre of my squares. And yeah, I did that off camera. So I'm sorry about that. I will do it again in this one. So that you can see that, what I mean. So there we go. We'll just we'll just knock that off. So we have get the right way up. So we have the bit that's going to be attached to your cover. These two, which will be sewn together. These two, which are pinned, which will be sewn together. Okay. So we're going to put this on and pin, same as before. Be careful not to go right through to the bottom. You're only going through the little tab. So it's on like that. 
and then the next one. And I'm only going to pin it for now. Just if you want to iron your fold so it makes a nice crease, then carry on. Okay. I've run out of pins. I've run out of pins, so I'm just going to hold them and hope that I'll get it in the right place. So again, just a loose tacking stitch, big as you like, because you're taking it out, or you can leave it in. It's up to you. Maybe don't do it in a pink if the rest of your book is blue. And there we go. Easy as that, guys. Just, whoops, actually go through both pages. That would be handy. Completely miss that page. That's fine. We'll just come up there. It's just tacking it down. There we go. We'll just do a knot over the top. Take those pins out. I've only got two pins out ready to do this, so I have to keep taking them out. So then we have one, two, three pages. So we're on our fourth page. And um, now, are we on our fourth page or is it time to put the back on? Because we're going to need those and my other two. For the cover aha uh -huh. so yep we are done we're having three pages the others are going to be the front and back so we can stop there we're going to snip we're going to snip because i can't find my big scissors try and do it quite straight like that so you have your pages you have a way to attach them and on the spine now, that isn't very straight. <laughs> I've got a big gap there. I may move that up because my this is where I should have measured, but I didn't. So what I might do is very quickly undo this and move them. It doesn't take a second and I'm going to I'm going to not like it if it's not right so if you find once you stitch them in that it's not right like like mine then just undo that bit of stitching that was the first one wasn't it so and just make your little fold a bit further up like that There we go. Now we've got less of a gap. So I'm not an expert. I, I'm only learning. So, you know, learning as I go. And I know this is upside down. <laughs> I do know. <laughs> you don't all have to put in the comments. Carol, did you know you had your label upside down? Yep. Yep, I did. I mean, you could put all three together just to double check your pages. Now, that's a bit better. Yeah. So you've got your three, your three pages. OK, right. Very quickly, you're just going to stitch that up. So just pop, pop your big stitches in. See, so you make a mistake. And... It's quite easy to rectify before you go any further, like anything else, you know. The sooner you sort of fix it, the easier it is. Leave it to the end and you'd, kept, you'd be keep looking at that going, I wish I'd done that. I wish I'd sorted that out. <laughs> right, just going to put one knot because... 
I will be undoing all that again. Maybe, hopefully not before I put it all together this time. Oh, let's see if that's any better. Oh, much better. Okay. I hope you can see what I mean by how your pages are together. So now we need a cover. Now, you can use anything. If you've got some fabric that you want to use as your cover, then just, you know, just grab some. Um, um, what have I got? I haven't really got anything. I've only got scraps left. But say you wanted this to be your cover, cut it down to four inches and then you can put this on the front and then, and then you could put your pieces maybe there and there. But because I'm doing that, I'm going to use this again. So, <laughs> right, more tricky bit, okay? So I don't know, I've got to use, I'm having these as my front, back and inside covers. Now, I've spent so much, so long on this, I think I'm going to put this as my front cover. And I might put this one on the inside. So, what I'm going to do is stitch, stitch, pin that onto there for a minute. Two seconds while I, don't pin that one down yet, just line it up with the front of my book like that. And then I'm going to take that pin back out and go through the whole lot. So now that is attached to the what will be the front of the book do the same at the back so you've got all your book pages in it's getting there guys it's getting there i'm very excited okay so don't don't stretch it too much just see where it goes um i'll put this one in there like that put a pin through it You'll figure it out. And then we're going to cut this bit off at the back because we don't need this. And if you've got bigger scissors, then that's a much better plan. <laughs> much better plan. Okay. So as you can see, it didn't matter what length your piece of fabric was. Okay. So then decide which one you want on the front. And I'm having this one. So that pin that we put on the inside can now go through all of it just to hold it on so you've got a front and then this one will go on the back this is how I'm doing mine and put your pin all the way through so there we go we're almost there we have one more little bit which is the spine, because you don't want it like that. So before you start stitching, we need to figure out the spine. Now, I'm thinking a sort of plainish spine after all the work we've done on there. That would work. So I have this spotty fabric. And I reckon I can just, will that rip? Yes, <laughs> it will now. I think that will go onto there like that. Then when you stitch, it'll be like that. So I'm thinking first, I'm going to do a bit more embellishing on it because, because you know, <laughs> why not? And all I'm going to do is very quickly just put some bits on these are way too big threads everywhere everywhere like this and oh i know what else we need we need like a ribbon 
a little tie. Nearly forgot that. I do have this one. Woo! I don't think that's going to be long enough. No, I've got I've got a whole bag of it, and don't worry. That one will do nicely. Don't worry. And we use that. We can use this and just take the red pink flower off it. Okay. So that I'm going to use. I'm going to put some buttons down it. I'll be back. I'm just going to quickly do that. Okay, so I've made a little spine. I've popped some buttons on and I've just gone round them and done some stitches. And we're going to put this on the back. Uh, that way up. <laughs> because I've got a point at the top and I don't want one at the bottom. And just sort of try and find me centre. Which is about there. And I am going to just pin them because I think it's going to be quite tricky to sew. Okay, we need to go a bit further round. There we go. So I'm going to pin on there. I mean, you can make yourself one whole piece to go on all the way round. Or you can have one piece of fabric. Don't forget to put your tie on. So, sort of, I, I don't know, how long, how long is a piece of string? <laughs> Let's just pop that underneath, like that. It's flattish, I'll check the other side in a moment. Tuck that in, pop that on the top, and just pin it to hold it in place for a minute. Because I'm going to do the same again. I'm going to just stitch it. Um, just stitch it down. And pin this side. So you've got your extra bit of fabric going underneath. Right. Oh, it's coming together. I'm very excited. Very excited. So I'm I've got a little bit of cotton left. And what I'm going to do is stitch hopefully <laughs> right so that is a whole front so i'm going to go through the whole lot <laughs> and tack it together then i can get rid of the pins there are easier ways to do this if you plan it out so now we can take all these nasty pins out I keep poking myself with and put them away put my needle away and on the back take that out I know there's another one somewhere there it is right now it's just squishy there we go it is almost done almost except for the long bit of stitching it all together now i'll probably do my stitching i don't know i might just do straight stitch all the way around just to because it's shabby if i get to a point where i want see that one's okay but say here I'm like, mm, you know, I don't like that gap. Then this is what I did before. Now you can either use some lace or some trim and just put some trim down the centre. And then when you stitch your page together like that, <laughs> the other side, when you stitch your page together, you sort of stitch that in at the same time. You can either use that, you could use ribbon, you could use whatever you've got. Ribbon would probably be tricky. Um, a bit of lace, 
So I've got much of this, but I've got a little bit. This is too fine, really. So yeah, anything you've got that will go like down the centre of that to cover it up. And that is it. I am going to stitch it all together. Okay, I have stitched all around all my pages and I've took out the pink stitches that was holding them together. So we are ready to just sort of finish this off. Now, I do have a big gap because, yes, I didn't measure. So my pages, my pages are a bit wonky. And you know what? It's fine. We don't mind a bit of wonky. This gap here is needed because if you don't have that gap, your pages are not going to lie flat. So that is on purpose. What isn't on purpose is leaving such a great big gap down the middle. So I'm just going to fill it with, with some of this, which is just a bit of grungy lace that's all curled up. And I'm just going to run it down the centre there. And I'm going to use plain cotton just because I've done because <laughs> I've got some on my needle basically but I don't want to shut my spine up so I'm just going to have to um yeah um I'll come up underneath my my, my little bit of lace and then I'll go back so that my knot is sort of hidden I don't know why. We always want to hide our knots, don't we? So just stitch this down and just don't go all the way through. I'm, I'm sort of going just down that page. <laughs> it's coming apart. <laughs> Which is going to get quite tricky as we get to the middle. But what I think I'll do is just sort of do a little running stitch. Hopefully I can hold that up. Might be a bit fiddly and probably would have been a better idea to do before I put my little spine on. So, you know, it's all a learning curve. And I don't mind if mine are not absolutely perfect. Let's face it, you know, junk journals fabric it's like a fabric junk journal <laughs> so, in my head i am really not worried I'm, I'm loving the scrappiness it's like a just because book in in that respect where you know when we just just enjoying our stitching and not worrying about what it actually looks like now i've tied a knot over the top of that now it's gone a bit more shabby but I'm not worried. I think being a bit messy makes it, gives it a bit of character. So I may do some more yet. So that's my centre. So we need to put a piece down this one as well. It doesn't take very long. I will probably fast forward or just do this off camera. And I'll come back and just go through for the final time the finished book. And this is so cool. I love these two pieces. It is shabby and scrumptious and I just love it. I'm going to show you a very quick flip through and sort of just, I'm, I'm not going to explain everything. I'm just going to sort of show you um, each bit. So there's the cover my spine and my back and all I've done to stitch my pages on is a running stitch around all the pages because it's the shabby sort of look that I wanted you can do the blanket stitch around my tie has worked perfectly so we have this is the inside cover so this is um just 
just yummy. <laughs> I love it. This is just playing around, practicing stitches. Basically, this whole book is just me practicing different stitches. I did add this little flower just before I stitched the pages together because I did realise that I hadn't actually remembered to um, stitch one. So I just cut one off a piece of, um, you know, length of ribbony stuff. So I just popped that on. This is the one that went wrong, which I absolutely love now. So even if your pieces go wrong, then, you know, you can still make them look really cool. Do you remember, we did sort of some stitching with the wool. I didn't like it. I left it in. It's in a video somewhere. This one I love with the beads, like a big wave. It's my little fish in his cave. No idea. Just, just lots of French knots on that page. My butterfly. Love this with the little butterflies on now. And on the back. That's it, guys. We are finished with this project. On to the next. I hope you've had fun doing it. Those of you that have joined in, thank you so much. It's been really cool doing this meditative stitching. And, you know, it, it was really interesting experiment to do. As you know, I'm doing a bit of experimenting on my channel, trying out different things. So thanks for putting up with me while we made this and all the mistakes along the way, which you've seen pretty much all of them. I'll see you soon, guys. Bye for now.